No, he's not. He's not the problem. There just isn't a lot of, you know, acting jobs going around at the moment. Uh, no, I... Okay, listen, I'm not, I'm not going to ask my engineer brother for acting advice, okay? Uh, no, no, oh, God, listen, it's getting really late, so I'm just going to go to bed. Yeah, um, I love you too.
Why? What do you want from me? I can hear the camera, you know. I know you can hear me. I know you can see me. So what do you want from me, huh? I can do it myself.
It is over. Lillian Rue has endured three months in the viewing room. How do you feel, Lillian? You have made it through. You are only minutes away from finding out whether you've won $200,000. How does that make you feel? Uh, 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 well, it looks like Lillian's a bit caught up for words right now. Let's take a look back at how this all started. This week on Snare, aspiring actress and Bakehouse employee Lillian Rouge is thrown in the viewing room for her shot at $200,000. I nominated Lillian for Snare because she's a great personality. And now the world will get to know her as I do. Plus that extra $200,000 couldn't hurt. Lillian won our hearts from the very beginning with hashtag bite that finger trending worldwide. She made us laugh and she made us cry. Voting is closed. I have the results here on this piece of paper. You have voted. Is Lillian worth it? Does she win $200,000? The answer is Ladies and gentlemen, yes! Lillian wins! With an approval rating of 87%, Lillian has won all our hearts. She has now been given a check for $200,000. Congratulations, Lillian. May all your dreams come true. Thank you once again for watching now. I know to be a movie star. I know Mary Prince Tommy. Who do you think Prince Tommy's going to marry? A beautiful actress. What are you doing? These sunglasses. It's my doll anyway. No, it's mine. She looks like me. It's terrible to see a young woman like that. Except the driver walked away without a scratch. So sad. On her big day. She looks familiar. You didn't hear? Her twin sister is Alexis McCoy. The Alexis McCoy. I heard the last movie landed her in rehab. I wonder if she'll come visit. <laughs> Careful with that, Beatrice. It's not replaceable. Alexis, your sister is here. Alexis, you're looking well. How can you tell? Just assume. Scoot. So, where's Prince Charming? Okay, uh, 
drink? I have Kentucky whiskey. I know it's your favorite. No, thank you. Fine. I'll drink alone. So, are you coming to Thanksgiving? No. Charlotte will be there. She's flying in from Guam on the 16th, I believe. I heard she's been getting worse. I have other plans, actually. So what is it that you want? Money? Look at me. I can't see. I can't walk. Money doesn't mean shit to me. Then what? When we were kids, we'd share everything. Yeah? We'd share every doll, toy, and even our room. Do you remember that Betty Button doll? The one with the curly brown hair? My mother would only buy us one doll. I guess she wanted us to learn. It's a connection that others don't understand. Look, I'm sure there's a point to this, but I've got three meetings this afternoon. I'm putting you in touch with the best doctors in the city. I'm sure they'll be able to help. And I really wish you'd come to Thanksgiving. You know, Charlotte would really appreciate it. Hey, I'll save you a turkey leg. Too soon. Your two o'clock is here. Lovely. You don't have an appointment. I didn't know I needed one. The door says by appointment only. As you can see, I'm blind. And him? Dyslexic. So what do you want? You look familiar. This is my sister. Alexis McCoy. I see the resemblance. Yes, but with several distinct differences. I see. I want these. And these. And while we're at it, I'd like these too. <sighs> yeah. Camel. How much do you got? Plenty for my settlement. First, I must make these two dolls in your image. The photo of your sister will help. How long is this going to take? It will happen within the hour. Once I have these two dolls in a drop of your blood. Oh, sorry, forgot to mention that. I can begin the transference. The transference is very accurate. Any imperfection that may exist in the donor will be transferred to you. Please, my sister is perfect. Well then, let's begin. Give me your hand.
This never happened. You understand? Bye. Six months. Shit. Shit. My leg. I can't bend my knee. Shit. Shit. Burned over 95% of her body. What bastard who was with her was burned beyond recognition. What happened? Not really sure. Her knee locked up on the accelerator. Looks like she has rheumatoid arthritis. She has family here to visit. Show them in. Hey, you're not looking so good. Sorry it took me so long to come visit. kids. Mom used to tell us to share. <laughs> Neither of you really learned that lesson. Till now. I love you, sis. Mm -hmm. First the girl lost her leg, and then ODs at her sister's and Alexis gets in an accident on the way there. And the third sister gets her liver after being on the wait list for three years. It's like a lifetime movie. I'd hate to be at their Thanksgiving dinner. for days. Who are you? Arnold. I'm Arnold. Do you have any water? I'm so thirsty. Where are we? What is this place? I want to go home. I'm so tired. <laughs> hey, what is this? Why am I here? Answer me, why am I here? <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, we're both gonna be okay. I'm just, I'm scared, Arnold. It's, it's Arnold, right? Or Arnie. My mother called me Arnie. Give me water. Mom. 
My name's Jennifer. I don't have any water. I'm sorry. That's okay. My hands hurt. It hurt real bad. Okay. 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 Let me see. What is it? Is this true? Why would you? You wouldn't. You wouldn't. Is this true? Did you do this? Who is doing this? Where are you? What the fuck is this? Why am I here? Oh God. Oh God, no. No, no, I can't do this. he knows why he's here. Don't you, Arnold? Who are you? A friend. A friend trying to help. Is that true? Is what true? What's written there, what the note says. Oh, that. No, it's not! He's kind of cute, isn't he? You wouldn't think by looking at him you were a monster. Or maybe you would. They say it's in the eyes. Or a uh, eye, I guess. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't do anything! Didn't do what, Arnold? You don't even know what the note said. I didn't do it! Stop it! Stop it. After what this fuck has done to you, stop. so often now. Right. We hardly think anything of it. What it feels <laughs> like. <laughs> Smells like. Sounds like. It's awful, isn't it? Are you scared? Are you scared right now? Terrified. <laughs> I wonder if this is terrifying for you. How would it feel for a child? A young boy, perhaps? <laughs> stop! Stop, yes, that's what they say, isn't it? They say stop! 
Mister, please stop. Mister, I want to go home. Is that what they said when you were pressed up against them? You disgusting fuck. Mister, I want my mommy. Stop it. Mister, I want to go home. I want my mommy. I want my mommy. I want my mommy. You can stop it all right now, Jennifer. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. Not like this. It isn't right. It won't bring him back. And you don't even know if he did it. Look, I know he did it, and you know he did it. But most importantly, he knows he did it. Don't you, no, motherfucker? I didn't you hurt anyone. Did it. You I never heard it. Anyone. You're gonna fucking tell me that in front of her? You just look at her and tell me right now that you didn't fucking do this. Look at him, Jennifer. You did it. You fucking did this. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I swear to God, I didn't hurt it. it. I don't want anything from you, Jennifer. I'm not taking here. I'm giving. I'm giving you the chance to finish this life and start a new one. A life free of fear and sadness. I'm giving you this gift free of charge. The gift of closure. And if you choose, restitution. Three of you alone. Hey everybody, it's handsome Billy Bob Brown, your late night host here on 98.9 The Quake. The whole room is shaking, whoa! <laughs> Tonight, on a very special Aftershocks, we have a special guest with us, a young woman by the name of Amy Fowler. Now, Amy claims she can talk to the dead. That's right, folks. Our focus tonight is spirits, the paranormal, anything to do with the other side. So give me a call here at Aftershocks if you want to talk about ghosts and goblins. And folks, please, no aliens, okay? We just did a whole week of that crap. So if you try beaming me up or something, I'm going to cut your call. And speaking of calls, let's take some. Hi there, you're on Aftershocks. Yeah, first off, I just want to tell you I'm a huge fan. <laughs> well, thank you. I listen to your show all the time. So, let's hear your story. Okay, I heard you were doing a show on ghosts, and so I was compelled to call. My cat, Princess Fluffy Bottoms. W wait, hold on. Princess Fluffy Bottoms. That's right, that's her name. Hmm, okay. Well, it was her name. She was killed last week. Killed? She got loose in the driveway 
My husband ran her over accidentally. Well, anyway, over the last few nights, we've heard strange noises in the house. She wore a collar with a heart charm on it. Naturally. Well, it would make a jingling noise when she ran around, and we've been hearing that same noise now every night. It's like our cat is still inside the house. An undead cat. Fascinating. Well, this morning, there were fresh paw prints in her litter. You kept the litter box. Oh, I can't get rid of it so soon. Well, that would explain a lot. I think she's stuck in between worlds or something. You mean she didn't make it to Kitty Heaven? Well, something like that. Well, have you tried a seance? A seance? You know, get a group together. Hold hands. Try to contact Princess Furry Puss. Fluffy bottoms. Whatever. Well, I guess I could try that. Ah, sure. Get the neighbors together. Throw a party. She'll love it. Okay? Listen, good luck with that. Thanks for calling in. Let's take our next caller, please. Hi there, you're on Aftershocks. Uh, yeah, my name's Edgar Hamilton. Hello there, Edgar. What's your story? Well, it's about my grandma. She mm -hmm. choked to death about a month ago. Ooh. That's awful. Yeah, it was my fault. I cooked her pork chops one night, but... She had problems chewing. Anyway, she choked on a piece of gristle. The worst part was that I was watching the Steelers play in the other room. Didn't even know she was choking. Now, at night, I hear funny noises. Noises? Like choking noises. One night, I actually swore I saw her standing over me, choking and hacking. At night, I That's could hear her calling my name. She's asking me to help her. See, I was her primary caregiver for five years. Well, Edgar, that's quite the story. Well, so what should I do? Get some earplugs. <laughs> Whoa, folks, okay, that sound means we need to go to commercial and pay some bills around here. But we'll see you right afterward here on Aftershocks. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Hal, how do I put up with listening to these crackpots? I pay you. Not enough. Come on, Hal, you know how I hate this otherworldly bullshit. I, I think it's going fine. Of course it's going fine. I'm here. If your daytime DJ Lewis was here, he'd be boring the hell out of everybody. Hell, people would be falling asleep out on the road, crashing into fucking light poles. Hey, hey, Lewis. I didn't see you there. Is the psychic bimbo ready yet? Yeah, she's almost ready. Great. Let's get it over with. <laughs> Glad you could come on the show tonight. Likewise. Mm -hmm. So you think uh, maybe after the show you and me we get a drink or something? No. Oh, okay. You're busy. Very. Tequila? No, thank you. I don't drink. Figures. <laughs> Welcome back to 98.9 The Quake. All right, folks. Hey, if you're just tuning in, we have a very special Aftershocks for you this evening. We have a special guest tonight, and her name is Amy Fowler, and Amy claims that she can speak to the dead. That's right, folks. The focus of tonight's show is ghosts, the undead, the afterlife. Spooky stuff. So, welcome to the show, Amy. Thank you for having me. Now, Amy, you claim you can talk to the dead. That's right. Uh -huh. And when did you find that you had this gift? Since I was a child. Hmm. Wow, that's amazing. And how did your family deal with this? Actually, I never knew my family. I grew up in an orphanage. Heartbreaking. I spent most of my life trying to be normal, but now I just embrace it. And you have your own TV show. That's right. Uh -huh. I bring people on the show who are having problems letting go of loved ones they've lost. I see. And how much do you get paid for this? What difference does it make? Come on, Amy, let's cut the crap here. You and I are essentially in the same business, right? Show business, okay? Only in your case, you tell people what they want to hear. You lie to them and make them feel better so that they could sleep at night. I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Did you just bring me on this show to insult me? No. 
I just want to know more about what it is you really do. Are you a religious man? You mean, do I believe in God? Let's just say I've been given very little reason to. Do you believe in God? I do. I speak to him every day. You do? And does he speak back? He does. Well, what does he say? Keep working. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you believe in the devil? Absolutely. You talk to the devil? Occasionally. Mm -hmm. Oh, and what does he say? Nothing? Huh? <laughs> well, let's just say that my belief system is based on what I can see and what I can feel. If you can convince me that God and the devil truly do exist, then I might be able to believe that you can talk to the dead. In fact, to all of our listeners out there, if any of you can convince me here that God and the devil truly do exist, then I would love to hear from you. Now, let's get back to your show. It's on KTKA on Friday nights at 10 p.m. And how does that work? Do you have somebody picked out in the crowd that claims to be touched by your, what do you call it, psychic the energy? resistance in believing that there are other forces at war? Because if God really does exist, there wouldn't be war and famine and disease in Hannah, Montana. Oh, we've got our next caller. Let's have your name. God. Excuse me? Well, what, what's that? Your first name or your last name? <laughs> okay. Do you have a question for Amy? She claims she speaks to you every day. She does. Ooh, then why call in? I mean, you're all-knowing. You should know everything we're going to say. I do. Oh. Okay, well, uh, what am I thinking right now? You're angry at your producer for letting this call get through. <laughs> Lucky guess. Okay. What am I thinking now? You're having some rather impure thoughts about your guest. <clears throat> okay. How about that? Well, so, God, what do you have to say to our guest? Nothing. Really? Nothing? I called to talk to you. Wow. God called to talk to me. <laughs> Man, am I a lucky guy. I wouldn't say that. Well, God, let's have it. Do you have a question? <laughs> I don't ask questions. That's your job. Okay. What am I holding? A bottle of tequila. Jose Cuervo. Okay. I think someone is playing a little trick on me. Lewis, is that you? Sorry about calling you boring. Any more questions? Something no one else would know. Okay, God. You're on. When I was nine, who did I accidentally shoot with a BB gun? Your neighbor, Raymond Bloyd. Hell, cut the fucking call. Now! We can't. Go to commercial. You doing all right? I'm fine. For those of you just tuning in, oh, it appears that we have our next caller on standby. You're on 98.9 The Quake. This is Aftershocks. Billy Bob Brown. That is I. Who is this? You were just talking to my good friend. Oh, God? <laughs> How do you know him? We've known each other for a long time. Oh, let me guess. This is Satan. Boy, it's my lucky night. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> All right. Whoever is doing this is going to get their ass kicked royally. Hal! Cut the call! Hell! You're doing this. I'm not doing anything. You had these people call in. So much anger. If you're the devil, then prove it. Otherwise, you're just some trailer trash junkie calling from your Sports Illustrated sports phone. Look at your hand. Oh, Jesus Christ! Shit! Shit! What the hell is this? How did you do this? I told you, it's not me. Hell.
Next caller, please. Hello, William? Excuse me, it's Billy Bob. Oh, cut the shit, William, it's your mother. All right. The joke isn't funny anymore. What's the matter, William? Drank too much tequila. That's what's the matter. This isn't happening. You're dead. I'd be alive if it wasn't for you. How do you feel to pull a plug on your sweet old mother? God damn you. Always the whiny one. The youngest and the whiniest. Your brother's here too. Alan? Hey, Bill, buddy. How's life? You bastard. I don't believe in you. What other proof do you need? I only believe what I can see, okay? Voices from the radio don't prove anything. Ah, oh, William, always a skeptic. Shut up. You're not real. Maybe by the time I finish off this bottle, I'll have some real proof. Be careful what you wish for. Where are you calling from? I'd hate to see the roaming charges. Actually, they're right here in the room. They've been here the whole night. That's a close one, folks. Oh. Hey, if you're just tuning in. For those of you just tuning in. No one can hear you. What are you talking about? Captain Dominic James Palmer II of the 3rd Infantry Unit. There's a lot of them out there, so just remember that mine was code name Black Snake, code number 8052. It may sound like gibberish, but believe me, it isn't. Behind me, on the wall, um, you'll see a bunch of names. I wish I could include some more, but the older you get, the more you realize there's only a select few that you actually care to talk to.
Um, in order to save many, I took a chance. Uh, I don't have any regrets. I'm just uh, surprised how it, how it worked. My goal is to have these videos be found online or whatever to put these people's minds at ease um, because what's happened here and what is happening here has to be seen to be completely understood. Well, I guess the experiment worked because um, in eight hours, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> Subject 4217 progressed today 149, further than any other campaign. Sir, shall we continue? Hmm. Play the song again. I'm going to tell mom.
Yes. Is it me? If you weren't here right now, I would so be masturbating to pass the time. Instead, I'm just laying here on a couch playing with my phone waiting for the power to come back on. Boring. FYI, masturbation causes premature vaginal wrinkling and stretching. No way. Oh yeah, I saw it on Dr. Oz, so you know it's true. Sexy. Can you do a little spin for me? No. Come on, I got dollar bills. No, you're broke. Besides, I'm not in the mood anyway. I have to go take a shower and get out of here. Louis is picking me up at 6. Nice. Leave your friend home alone during a blackout. What could happen, right? Mm, I would bring you along, but I'm not big into threesomes, so sorry. As cold as you are, sexy. What the hell, Stina? You know I ain't having my photo taken. Just preserving the sexiness for later. Just delete it, okay? You'll thank me when you're 40. Stop being weird. Just delete it. Why? Is something bad gonna happen if I don't? Don't be crazy. Just delete it, okay? What a grump. Just so you're aware, I was totally joking about me masturbating. I'm actually celibate. Hello? Are you okay?
Karen, come on, say something. Fine then. If you're naked, please cover up or I will be forced to take another photo of you. Honestly, Karen, if you're trying to scare me, it's working. So come on out, okay? Look, I know you're upset about me snapping that stupid photo of you, but I'll delete it. Nice. If this is some kind of prank, you're good. How'd you get all these photos in my phone? Nice job. Did Lewis put you up to this? Very creepy. So when are you and your boyfriend gonna pop out and say boo? Karen. Mm. Karen, if this is some kind of sick joke, please stop it. These are just images in your phone. They can't hurt you. All you have to do is delete them. Just delete them, Stina.